All right, guys, welcome to my first ever scripting lesson. If you've watched my previous content, you know that I don't typically do educational stuff, but today we're gonna be trying it out and see how it goes. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a button simulator, which is the first game that I made that performed really well. And it made like 300,000 Robux in total. And this is when I was first starting out. So it's possible for any of you guys to do for sure. So we're gonna start off by opening a new base plate in Roblox studio now before we do any scripting or building anything like that we want to go up into game settings and we want to save this game to roblox and you guys can name it whatever you want for the sake of this i'm just going to name it button simulator demo if you guys hear some banging in the background that's my dad working downstairs ignore that all right so now that the game has been saved to roblox we can go ahead and open up game settings once again and now we're gonna go into security and we will want to enable the requests along with access to API services. And then if you guys plan on adding game passes to your game, you will want to allow third party sales. And then you can go ahead and just save it all. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do with this project is add a new script to server script service. And if you guys do not see this box on the right side, go ahead and click on the top view and then enable Explorer and Properties. All right, so once we have the script open, we're going to go ahead and change the name to Leader Stats because this is where we're going to be making the stats for the players. So where do we start? First, we wanna define the data. So where do we start with this? Well, first we wanna detect when a player joins the game so that we can give them their data. First, we have to define players. So let's do local players equals game get service players so what this does is we created a new value by using the local called players and this is the service within roblox studio that is already created and now we're going to detect when a player is added to the game so player dot player added connect function player so what this does is we got the players from the line that we did before and we're going to detect when a player is added to that list of players and whenever there is a new player added, we're gonna connect a function and use player as the value for that player who has just been added. So if we ever wanna modify something about the player, we use this term right here. So let's go ahead and make a new folder inside of the player where we'll hold all of the stats. So let's go ahead and do local leader stats equals instance dot new folder, and we'll put it inside the player. So what this does is just creates a folder and puts the player as the parent. And we'll wanna give a name to this value. So we'll do leader stats dot name equals leader stats. Next, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add the different values that will be in this folder. So we'll do local cache equals instance dot new folder, or actually we'll wanna do a number value for this because we'll be changing the value of this. And we'll put it inside of the leader stats folder. And then we'll give a name for the cache. So cache dot name equals cache. And then if you want to add any more stats, you can go ahead and copy this and just change the name here for whatever you want. So we'll do multiplier next, since that is a common value in a button simulator. And then we'll change the name in here to multiplier. And now, if we go ahead and click play on the top of the screen, we should see our stats in the top right corner like you see in most games. So we have a value for cash and a value for multiplier. But right now, none of the stats are changing. So let's go ahead and add in a system to gain cash every few seconds. So first, we're gonna wanna make a new script and double click on it to open it. And we'll wanna say game.players.player added. So the same thing as before. And we'll connect another function. And we'll do while wait, this number right here is how fast you will generate cash. So this is gonna be every 10th of a second because I have 0.1. If you put one here, it'll be wait for one second. So I'm gonna keep it at like 0.2 probably. While wait 0.2, do player.leaderstats.cache.value plus equals one. So what this does is we get the leader stats value that we put inside of the player in this leader stats script right here. And then we got the cache which was located inside the leader stats, which we did here. And we got the value of that and added one to it. So now every fifth of a second, we get some cash. And it seems to be working well so far. It's amazing that I haven't made an error yet. I kind of suck at scripting. So now 
we got the cash increasing and we should probably start making the actual buttons now because that's the whole point of the game right so let's go ahead and add in a cylinder and we can scale this up a bit this is all of your preference you could use a model from blender 2 if you'd like and we're gonna go ahead and just make a folder in the workspace titled buttons and then inside of this we'll make another folder for multiplier buttons and let's go ahead and place this inside of that multiplier folder and we'll name it multiplier and for the sake of consistency we'll make this red like most games have it so now let's go ahead and add a script inside the buttons folder name this button handler so first we want to get all of the buttons in the game right so we'll do local buttons equals script dot parent and then get descendants and what this does is we're getting this buttons folder and we're selecting everything under it next we're going to want to get players once again so local players equals game get service players so now this is where it starts to get a little bit more confusing we're going to do a for loop so for and then underscore comma button and i pairs buttons do so what this does is basically it runs through each descendant within the buttons and it assigns this name to it and then this underscore is just for each thing inside of the folder so we're running this script for every object inside of this folder so now we obviously don't want this script to apply to the script or to the folder so we're gonna say if button dot name equals multiplier then and you'll want to put a double equals here actually to make sure that it's true and we can change this name to just multiplier now and we'll actually want this in parentheses or not parentheses quotation marks and to test that we found this we're gonna do print button found so let's go ahead and test and see if we have it in the output and yes we do we have printed button found if you guys are not able to see the output Go ahead and click view on the top of the screen and select output right here. All right, we're chilling so far. This is going well. I'm very impressed with myself. So now we want this button to actually do something, right? So let's go ahead and detect when the player steps on the button. So we'll do button dot touched connect function hit. So whenever the button is touched, we're connecting a new function and hit is gonna be the value of the thing that touched that button. So we're gonna see if, we wanna detect if it's actually a player that touched the button and not just another part. So we're gonna do if hit.parent find first child of class humanoid then. So we're seeing if the thing that hit the button has a humanoid within it. And that's gonna basically detect if it's a player. And then we're gonna say local player equals players get player from character hit dot parent so we're seeing if they have a humanoid then we're going to say that the person who hit the button is player and we're going to say if player then so we're going to make sure we got the player local cache this is where we're going to change the actual stats of the player's values so local stat or local cache equals player dot leader stats dot cache and local multi equals player dot leader stats dot multi. All right. All right. So we've got this and now we want to change the value, right? So we're going to say multi dot value plus equals one. So this is going to basically do multi equals the same value that it was before, but adding one. So now whenever we step on the button, our multiplier should go up by one. Oh no. Oh, stupid error by me. Uh, we love getting errors. We just have to change this instead of multi, it's plot, multiplier. I got lazy. So now it should work. Yes, there we go. We get a multiplier every time we step on the button, but we want to actually have the player purchase the button instead of just getting free stuff from it, right? So we're going to go ahead and add a value within this button. So let's search value and we'll do a number value and we're going to name this amount this is going to be how much multiplier the player gets from the button and then we'll make another value called cost and this is how much cash the player is going to have to pay to get the button so we'll name this like 25 cash so now what we have to do is we have to check if the player has enough cash to purchase the button so we're going to do if cash dot value is greater than or equal to button dot amount then cash dot value minus equals button dot amount and then we can say rebirth dot value plus equals button dot okay so this should actually be cost cost and then this is multiplier i don't know what i'm thinking so now we have to get at least 25 cash you can see it's not working right now oh i see we have to add a value here so because we're checking for the actual number within the button 
not just the variable. So now whenever we have over 25 cash, it should work. Yeah, there we go. All right. See, I knew I'd be er making errors here soon. I'm not, I'm not that good at scripting. I was surprised that I made it that far. Now, whenever we get multiplier, our cash is not going up any quicker. And typically what we want is the multiplier multiplies the cash, hence the name. So let's go back into our cash generator script and let's change this to plus equals one player dot leader stats dot multiplier dot value. And we'll put this in parentheses just to avoid any errors. So now when we get one multiplier, we should gain two cash each tick. There we go, yep. We gain twice as fast. Now we gain three, four, five, six. All right, perfect. Now, ooh, what do we do now? We've got the basic system down, but we only have it for multiplier buttons, right? And we can now duplicate this button and just change the values inside of it. So let's say like we want five multiplier for 200 cash. We can do that now but there's no way of telling the actual cost of the buttons or what it's giving because there's nothing displaying above the button to show that so let's go ahead and add some billboard ui above the button to do this let's go ahead click on the button and add billboard ui and then inside this we'll add a frame so for the billboard ui let's go ahead and adjust the position so search for offset studs offset and you'll want to change this middle value. So I'm going to set it to like five. And then we'll also want to adjust the size. Let's let's adjust the size to like 0.5 comma 0.5. And then, all right, that's very small. We can change that for sure. Let's do like five and then three. That's a little big. All right, that works. And then the frame inside will change the size to one comma zero comma one comma zero. Perfect. So now, Let's go ahead and add a text label inside of this frame. We're going to set the anchor point to 0.5 comma 0.5 and we'll set the position to 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.25 comma 0 and we'll set the size to 1 comma 0 comma 0.5 comma 0 and we'll change the text to cost or actually we'll we'll change this to amount and we'll change the name of the text label to amount as well then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this by holding Control d and we'll change the name of this to cost and the position will change the 0.25 to 0.75 so now we have these two different text labels and for both of these you want the text to be scaled so go ahead and check off this box here all right we're making good progress here so let's go ahead and change the cost text to cost just so we know what each is cost. All right, all right. So now let's go ahead and figure out how to incorporate this into the script so that we can display the cost value and the amount value above each of these texts. So let's go back into the button handler script. And first off, we're gonna wanna move this button.amount.value and button.cost.value up higher in the script so that we can refer to it earlier. So let's go ahead and do it way up here before the button's even touched. We'll do local amount equals button dot amount dot value and then local cost equals button dot cost dot value. And then we can change each of these to the corresponding value. All right. Next, we can go ahead and do button dot billboard UI dot amount dot text label dot text equals amount. So what this does, if we got all the way down to the text label that we just created, oh wait, we don't even need the text label. We can just do frame dot amount dot text. So we got billboard UI frame amount, and then we get the text of that and we set it to amount. And then we'll do button dot billboard UI dot frame dot cost dot text equals cost. So now when we play, we get one multiplier from the button and it costs 25 but it's not pretty obvious to the player what which one's the cost and which one's the amount that you get so let's go ahead and change the colors of these so the text color for the amount is probably going to be red because that is what we are getting from the button the multiplier color is red and then the cash will probably want that to be green oh text color green and that'll make it more obvious so now we see we lose 25 cash and we get one multiplier from it and then also just to make it look better you can go onto the billboard ui 
and set this light influence all the way to zero. When it's at one, it'll have a different brightness depending on which way you're facing in relation to the sun. But if you set this to zero, it'll always just be its brightest. And then we can also select each of these frames and just select and set the background transparency to one. That way all you see is the text there. So now when we play, we have a one on top and a 25 on bottom. It's looking pretty good so far. So now we can go ahead and duplicate this button a few times, give it some new values. So let's set the amount to like five, cost 125 or 150 actually. Let's do another one. Let's say we get 10 from this one and it costs 400. Each of these buttons will display their own values now. So this one, you get one multiplier for 25 cash. This one, you get five for 150 cash. The last one, you get 10 for 400 cash. Pretty simple. And you can just do this for as long as you want on an endless line. Now, let's say you want to add in some more values because just having multiplier is a little boring. So let's add in a new button. We'll name this Rebirth. And we'll change the color to blue. All right. And now, Let's go ahead and make a new folder inside the buttons folder and we'll name it Rebirth. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and change the color on the text to match. So we'll change the amount to blue and then cost to red because we're gonna be spending the multiplier to get this button. All right, so now let's go ahead and add in a new multiplier value into the leader stats. So we'll say local Rebirth equals instance dot new number value, number value, comma leader stats. And then rebirth.name equals rebirth. And in this button handler, we're now gonna need to change a few things. So let's say, okay. So we have to detect if the button is within the rebirth folder or the multiplier folder. So let's do if button.parent.name equals multi then, and then we'll move all of this over. And then we'll do if button.parent.name is equal to rebirth then. So then we'll do if multi.value is greater than or equal to cost, then multi.value gets subtracted by the cost and the rebirth.value is added by one or added by the amount. And we haven't defined rebirth yet in this script. So let's go ahead and do that. Local rebirth equals player.leader stats dot rebirth. And just like that, we added a new stat to the game. It'll be that simple every time. So let's go ahead and play. Oh, we have not set an amount in cost yet for this. We're gonna go ahead and change this right here on the line five, where we check for the button's name. We're gonna change this to button, and we're gonna change all of these parts to button, just so that we don't have to make a new section for each of the new multipliers. Button. So now it'll go through every button in the game and give them the values. So this one will get one rebirth for 25 multiplier. So let's go ahead and grind for 25 multiplier. All right, we have 26 multiplier. And now when we step on this, we should get one rebirth. Yes, it worked perfect. I'm so good at scripting guys. I don't know why I ever doubted myself. Okay, so now when we get the rebirth, we wanna get more multiplier based on how much rebirth we have. So let's go ahead and change this spot right here we're going to do, we're going to put this into parentheses, amount plus rebirth dot value. Okay, so now if we save up for more rebirths again, we'll get double the amount of multiplier when we get one rebirth. So instead of getting one multiplier from this button, we'll get two. All right, so now if we buy here, we step on here, you see it goes up by two. Oh, we're getting very quick now. This game's getting a little easy. Might need to make some balance changes. But yeah, uh, that's basically a full button simulator right there. Obviously it can look prettier, but I just speed ran this in 30 minutes just to show you guys how to do a little bit of scripting yourselves. And yeah, if you guys want a better version of this, I'll be posting one on Shopty Happy. And I hope you guys all learned something from this. Anyways, I hope you all have a good day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.